I give the floor to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Erdogan. And uh, thank you everyone who uh, joined us uh, today in person and in the seminar on Zoom. Uh, before I get started, uh, I, I would also like to acknowledge the uh, owners and custodians of the lands on which uh, I work and live and pay my respect to the indigenous uh, past, present and emerging. And I sincerely hope that it doesn't uh, look more uh, insincere and hypocritical of me than uh, a few minutes back before the referendum and their result. Mm -hmm. And I would like uh, to uh, also to express my solidarity with all people who have been suffering from uh, settler colonization throughout the world. Uh, maybe their their uh, their uh, feelings and pains and sufferings can be heard now more than ever. Uh, thank you so much again. Uh, as Erdogan correctly mentioned today, uh, I will talk about reincarnation or metempsychosis as a theory of immortality among Muslims. I will start with some introductory remarks and then uh, I will go to the main uh, body of my, my work. In the, in the introduction, I would like to clarify a, a couple of points regarding the title of my work, what I mean by my narrative report, and uh, a, a couple of clarification points about the term reincarnation and so on. Uh, so this is going to be a minority report, as, as you uh, all know, among what we now know the so-called Abrahamic religions or the so-called Western religions, uh, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, uh, reincarnation or metempsychosis is not the major theory of uh, the majority of the people about uh, immortality. So this is going to be a minority report in the meaning that the major theory of immortality is uh, something different from our uh, conventional understanding of the terms uh, reincarnation and metempsychosis. And uh, even though those who have supported and advocated among Muslims, those who have supported and advocated the theory of metempsychosis or re reincarnation, even though they didn't uh, form a united front, but they have uh, had some commonalities, some, uh, let's say, minimal commonalities, uh, uh, that make them a minority group uh, among Muslims, those who are known as the supporters and sympathizers of the theory of reincarnation among Muslims. Uh, and uh, I, I have to begin with a kind of disclaimer. Uh, in the title, we can find the theory of immortality. Uh, uh, reincarnation has been regarded a theory of re immortality among Muslims. I just wanted to mention that what I mean by immortality is not uh, mutually exclusive with the theory of uh, purification. So purification and purgatory uh, could be understood as part of the larger picture in which theories of immortality are discussed. So uh, when we uh, see the theories of immor uh, reincarnation among Muslims, uh, some of them will focus on the uh, concept of purification. I just wanted to put it up front that what I mean by this is not in contrast with the theory of immortality and the concept of immortality. So what do we mean by uh, in, uh, reincarnation and metempsychosis in English? Uh, let's, let's move on to uh, a short discussion, short mentioning of the terminology. Uh, for what we know as 
metempsychosis or reincarnation. In English, what we know uh, in the Islamic tradition, there are different terms among Muslims. Uh, one term is the term, as, as you all know, the term tanasukh, which comes from the Arabic root nasq, uh, which means, uh, which has two meanings. One meaning has something to do with a, a copy of a text, and the other one has something to do with the notion of abrogation. So, tanasukh is uh, one term. The other term in, in Muslim civilization for the, uh, for the notion of metempsychosis or uh, reincarnation is the term taqamus, uh, naql, and intiqal. Naql, intiqal, and tanasuk are common uh, among the Neoplatonists and those who support the school of illumination. I'll get to that in detail later. The equivalent for these terms, for the term tanasuk, we have metempsychosis in English. Sometimes we have the term transmigration of the soul. Sometimes we have the term in 19th century, we can see the term palangelesis or metensomatosis which means the excessive, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, successive uh, incarnation, uh, and palingenesis means born, uh, uh, born again, or rebirth, or birth again. So these are the major terms. The term taqamus is common among a minority group uh, uh, called the Druze, uh, which can be found in, in today's Syria and Lebanon, among other places. And it has something to do with the word qamis. Qamis means the, the shirt, and taqamus means to change one shirt, to, to change one worn out shirt and put on the other one, which, uh, which is in complete harmony with the or uh, with the understanding of reincarnation in, in Hindu tradition. The term that we can find in Bhagavad Gita, worn out clothes, new clothes. And uh, so there is another term among another minority group called the people of the truth or your son or Ahlihaq who are common uh, who, who can be found uh, and they, uh, to, they live in today's Iran and parts of Iraq in, in southwestern and northwestern part of Iran and eastern part of Iraq in the Kurdish, uh, in the Kurdish uh, part of Iran and Iraq. And they use the term Bejam Ahmadan or Bedun Ahmadan, which is a Persian Kurdish term very similar to the uh, term taqamus, which means to put on a new clothes, or to, to come into a new clothes. So uh, we have this wide range of terms. Naql and integral are very uh, close to the term transmigration or transfer. So for these uh, this wide range of uh, terms, we have some wide range of English equivalents, as I said. Uh, and uh, just uh, for the rest of uh, this conversation, uh, along with other, uh, other scholars of uh, metempsychosis in Islam, I will follow them and use the terms reincarnation and metempsychosis almost synonymously even though they're, they have some subtle differences. Uh, so the major theory of, uh, let's say the major theory of uh, immortality and afterlife and uh, what, what happened after death among Muslims is typically known as uh, resurrection, the theory of resurrection. And this is a, a linear understanding of the time and death. But 
uh, it doesn't mean that the theory of uh, reincarnation and metempsychosis is absent among Muslims. We can find uh, different groups of people who are supporters of theory of reincarnation and metempsychosis since the 10th, since uh, the early 10th century. And uh, since then, in the books of heresiography, they have been condemned as uh, different uh, theological slurs, heretic, uh, heteropraxic, and so on and so forth. But they have been living through uh, these uh, centuries, since 10th century, and they have uh, they have been uh, among Muslims in Muslim civilizations until now. Uh, so this is one of the major challenges that we have in this study of metempsychosis among Muslims. Uh, I would like to mention two major challenges. One challenge is what what I mentioned. Um, it is kind of unfortunate that some parts, a, a, I think, considerable amount of the information that we have received, we have received them from the books of heresiographies, uh, heresiography, heresiographical literature, which is kind of biased. Uh, and it has some kinds of negative uh, implications and connotations. That's one challenge in this study of reincarnation and metempsychosis in Muslim civilizations. The other challenge is uh, what uh, some 19th century, early 20th century Orientalist scholars understood based on their uh, let's say sometimes superficial uh, confrontations or encounters with the texts that are prone to be understood as the supporter of reincarnation. So we have some examples of the early 20th century uh, Orientalist scholarship that, uh, let's say, overly generously and lavishly attributed the notion and concept of metempsychosis and uh, reincarnation to uh, major Sufis. For example, if we, if we look at uh, the works of Margaret Smith, the uh, great scholar of Raba Adawiya in early 20th century, uh, she has a uh, an important essay called Sufism and Metempsychosis, or Su Sufism and Metempsychosis, in which she attributes the theory of metempsychosis to Sufis uh, like Rumi, Attar, and even Abdullah Ansari. For those who may not be quite familiar with Ansari, Ansari is one of those uh, 10th century Sufis who by any definition can be understood as an, a very conservative uh, Sufi who has nothing to do with the notion of metempsychosis. But so we have these kinds of uh, early 20th century literature that we need to deal with as well. So despite uh, these two challenges, uh, thanks to the later uh, studies and scholarship provided by scholars like Paul Walker and his study of Muslim Neoplatonists, and maybe most importantly, Zabine Schmidke's, uh, let's say, comprehensive analysis of metempsychosis and reincarnation, among these uh, followers of the School of Illumination, uh, Yahya Sorvardi and his uh, followers and successors, now we have a better understanding of uh, the presence and life, uh, the life of the concept of metempsychosis among Muslims. So uh, I will uh, start with two major meanings that the term tanasoh as the most common word in Muslim civilization has. 
So when we go to the uh, Islamic Islamic literature, we can understand that the term tanasu, as I said, it has something to do with copies and abrogation. The term tanasu has uh, something to do with two major meanings. One meaning uh, is the transmigration of the soul from one body to another, uh, which is more common and which is what we focus uh, generally in today's discussion. There is a secondary meaning of the term tanasuk in some uh, works of heresiography, which is a translation of another theological term in, in Islamic theology, which is the term hulud, which, which literally has something to do with emanation, uh, in the, the idea of immanence or inhibition. In the second meaning of the term tanasukh, uh, the idea is a divine or godly spirit inhabits in the body of some sacred figures. We can find it among those who are called in quotation mark exaggerationist Shiites, those who are, uh, and, and some other minority groups in uh, Islamic philosophy. So just, uh, I, I needed to mention that uh, when we talk about reincarnation and metempsychosis, in, among Muslims, typically these two meanings are in mind. Among the minority groups who supported the idea of reincarnation, uh, we can talk about, as I said, Muslim Neoplatonists uh, who were uh, present since the early 10th century, a handful of Mu'tazilites, uh, Mu'tazilite theologians, those who are known as the people of justice and monotheism, or justice and unity. Uh, one of the major theological trends among Muslims in, in, the, in the 10th century onwards. Uh, so we also have, as I said, Muslim uh, Neoplatonist philosophers, most uh, significantly the Brethren of Purity in the 10th century Iraq, Basra, and Baghdad. Uh, some philosophical figures like uh, Abu Bakr, Muhammad ibn Zakaria, Razi, also a Neoplatonist. And uh, maybe the most prolific group of the supporters of reincarnation could be found, uh, found among the school of illumination. The Arabic term is falsafatul uh, ishraq uh, or hikmatul ishraq, which uh, refers to the philosophy of Yahya Sohravardi, uh, who died in 1191, and uh, his followers, uh, some of them uh, are, uh, some of them belong to the Sunni Islam, some of them belong to the Shiite Islam, and we have a great scholar of uh, Jewish theology and philosophy, Ibn Kamune, who was also a follower of the school of illumination. Among, uh, so along with these groups, we also have, uh, as I said, some uh, minority groups in the periphery of Muslim civilizations like the Druze, the Alavid in Anatolia, and we also have Nusayriya in the Levant, uh, who support some ideas uh, uh, of reincarnation. And we also have uh, the, uh, some uh, Anatolian dervishes and, uh, as I said, the people of the truth. All of these groups, in one way or another, support the idea of reincarnation with some modifications, as, a, as we will see, with some modifications and some observations. I will talk about uh, 
three of these groups in some details uh, in the next 20 minutes. The first group uh, that I will discuss is uh, neoplatonists. It is great to remember that among Muslims, among Muslim neoplatonists, those who follow the philosophy of Plato and uh, Plotinus among Muslims, most specifically the word Eniyad. Uh, among these figures, there is an idea. These Muslims believe that the resource and the major, uh, let's say, the mother load of the idea of metempsychosis and reincarnation is the ancient Greeks. It is interesting that some of them even believe that the idea of reincarnation, metempsychosis among Indians, uh, even Indians have been introduced, according to them, have been introduced to the idea of metempsychosis by the Greeks who traveled from Greece to uh, to India. I think it is it doesn't matter that much whether this theory can be historically verified. What what uh, I think we can learn from this uh, concept and idea is the importance of the Greek philosophy for these for these uh, Muslim thinkers. So for them, they have been very much impressed by Plato's Phaedo uh, and Republic. Uh, these two wars in which the idea of metempsychosis was mentioned. They also are very much impressed by thinkers like Plotinus, Pythagoras, and Iamblichus. All of them, in one way or another, supported the idea of metempsychosis. Uh, since the 10th century, we can find these groups as the supporters of the idea. Uh, one of the major uh, supporters of metempsychosis are the Brethren of Purity, or Ikhwan Safa, as I said. Uh, they emerged and rose in the 10th century Iraq. Ikhwan Safa were a group of, let's say, kind of en enigmatic figures, anonymous figures. We, uh, uh, thanks to the scholars of uh, 10th century Islam, we now know the names of some of them, but they wanted to uh, remain as a group. They were the followers and uh, the advocates of Greek philosophy in general, and Plato and uh, Plotinus in particular. They have provided, just uh, to, to give you uh, some idea, uh, if you're not familiar with them, they have written 52 tracts uh, as collective works in four parts. Uh, some of them in mathematics, some of them in natural philosophy, sciences of the soul and intellect, and theology. Among these uh, tracts, at least three of them have something to do with the notion of metempsychosis. For example, in episode number 21 on plants, uh, they talk about a theory of metempsychosis uh, when they assert that the universal soul ascends to heaven through all the steps of life organization from the minerals and plants until human beings and, uh, and above. Or in episode number 38 on death and resurrection, they provided a significantly different understanding of the notion of resurrection in order to find a way or in order to open a window to sell the theory of uh, reincarnation. Most importantly, they have, along with these 52 tracks, they have provided a, a, separate, uh, a separate treatise called Al-Rasalat al jamaa which can be translated as the comprehensive treatise, in which they have provided the cream of the crop 
uh, everything that they have said in those 52 uh, tracks, they have abridged it in this, and specifically in this uh, comprehensive treatise, they have also defended the idea of metempsychosis for them. Metempsychosis can be uh, can occur, can be verified from bottom to the top. So uh, it is possible for the uh, the plants to uh, have the transmigration to the higher levels, animals from animals to the human being, and so so on. So they have a ascending uh, chain of transmigration that they can they can uh, accept. Uh, but this is one group among Neoplatonists, among many. The other one uh, I think we can mention is Abu Bakr uh, Zakaria, uh, Muhammad ibn Zakaria Razi, uh, who also a proponent of uh, Neoplatonic philosophy. He has written a treatise called Atebu Rouhani which means the spiritual medicine, in which he supported a specific uh, understanding of uh, metempsychosis. For Zakaria, the major pretext or the major motivation for uh, advocating metempsychosis is a, the acquisition of knowledge. Mm -hmm. For him, it is very important for every single entity, every single living entity to have the equal opportunity to acquire knowledge. And when it's not possible for someone to uh, to acquire knowledge in only one life, so there should be a second chance and a third chance for them to acquire it. Uh, let me read uh, one small passage of uh, this treatise uh, on spiritual medicine in which he elaborates on his idea. He's, he reads, if the soul leaves the body without having acquired these ideas, meaning philosophy, and without having recognized the true nature of the physical world, but rather still yearning after it and eager to exist therein, it will not leave its present dwelling place, but will continue to be linked with some portion of it. It will not cease because of the generation and corruption within the body in which it is lodged to suffer continual and reduplicated pains and cares multitudinous and afflicting. This is uh, translated by A.J. Arbor. So acquisition of knowledge for him is the most important. Among the new Platonists, uh, we have also the uh, famous Ismaili philosopher, uh, Sajestani, who is also a fan of the theory of metempsychosis. Uh, he died in 971. Uh, and he is the only person who is cited by the great Indologist uh, Al-Biruni in his work, Tahrir Umal al-Hand, research on what belongs to India, his, his Indology uh, great work of ethnography. If we can say it, uh, ethnography, if we can attribute ethnography to any pre-modern work. Uh, and in his work, Kashpul Mahju, Sajestani uh, supports the idea of metempsychosis that goes in the same species. He was very much impressed by a Greek philosopher named Iamblichus. Iamblichus believed that metempsychosis could be achieved, uh, could be uh, taking place among the, uh, the same species. Uh, from one human being to another, or from one uh, animal to another, and so on. So unlike what we can see among the brethren of purity for uh, Sajestani uh, and Yablikos, metempsychosis is 
exclusively possible within one species. So that's another development or that's another variation that we can find among Muslims. Interestingly enough, because uh, the uh, the uh, Sejistani support for the idea of metempsychosis was against the creeds of Ismaili Shism. He was forced to take his words back, and he did, uh, as we can now know, based on what we read in another uh, Ismaili's work, Nasser Fosro's uh, work, he, uh, he had to take it back and he wrote another treatise in order to refute the idea of metempsychosis, as you may guess. Uh, I think we still have some time to talk about metempsychosis in the School of Illuminationist Philosophy. The School of Illuminationist Philosophy uh, rose to prominence in the 12th century thanks to the works of a Persian, uh, a Persian philosopher uh, called Yahya, Yahya ibn Habash Sohrawardi, who died in 1191. Erdogan, at the beginning of uh, our discussion, mentioned the work that we did together. Uh, so I just want to uh, make sure that we know that we talk about two different Sohrawardis. What Erdogan and I uh, did was uh, the critical edition of the works of Omar Sohrawardi. This guy, the philosopher, he was a Sufi. The philosopher guy that we talk about is uh, called Yahya ibn Habash Sohrawardi. Uh, so, Yahya ibn Habash uh, based his philosophy on the revival of what he called al Hikmatul Atiq, or Hikmatul uh, Atiq, which means the old wisdom or the perennial philosophy. He wanted to revive the philosophy of the ancient Greece, the ancient India, and the ancient Persia for which he was very much uh, interested in the works of Plato and Iamblichus, among others. Throughout, it's interesting that throughout his works, almost all of his works, he rejected the idea of metempsychosis, except for one work, his masterpiece, his tour de force called Hekmatul Ishvak, The Philosophy of Illumination, in which Unlike his other works, he didn't reject the idea. Instead, he talked and he de uh, he talked about different uh, theories about metempsychosis in the ancient world among the Indians and among the Greek, and he talked about a certain Buzo self. We don't we don't know exactly who is referring to, but some people believe that. He refers to a kind of later reception of Buddha. So, in which he talked about uh, Buddha Sefer's uh, understanding of the theory of metempsychosis without refuting that. It's good to remember that uh, in, in the history of Islamic philosophy, the giant the giant ancient philosopher is Aristotle for for Farabi, for, uh, for, for Ibn Sina, and so on and so forth. And based on what we know from Aristotelian philosophy, we, uh, we understand the relationship in Aristotelian philosophy, we understand the relationship between the body and soul as uh, he says, Body is the uh, uh, soul is the actualization of the body. Body and soul are together, and th there is a concurrent emergence of body and soul. So there is no such thing as pre-eternity of the soul for them, and there is no possibility for them to imagine the soul without a body. So 
That's why among these Muslim philosophers, Avicenna refuted uh, unequivocally uh, refuted the idea of metempsychosis. And he provided some uh, additional reasons. For example, Ibn Sina says that uh, we, uh, animals in the world outnumber human beings, uh, plants outnumber animals, and so on and so forth. So uh, if the, there was supposed to be metempsychosis, how would you deal with the difference between the number of animals, human beings, and so on and so forth. And also, how would you deal with a body having more than one soul? Because it was not imaginable for them to uh, have a soul without a body, because they, they believe that this is against the nature. The soul cannot do, uh, cannot be without the body even for one second. That's what so Ravardi also believed in his most of his works, except for Hekmatul Eshwab or the philosophy of illumination. This window, this is a small window, allows one of his most important successors called Shamsuddin Shahrazuri, who was a great commentator of uh, Hekmatul Eshwab on the philosophy of illumination, to endorse the idea of metempsychosis. Shah Razuri, for the, for the first time, came up with this conclusion that in the book of uh, Hekmatul Eshvak, Philosophy of Illumination, where Sohrawardi discussed the theory of, uh, of metempsychosis according to Buza Seth, without refuting them, that means endorsement. And he, he uses, he takes advantage of this, this small window in order to provide some further uh, arguments in favor of rooting for the idea of metempsychosis. For, and, but as we have seen, uh, neither of the previous groups believed in uh, metempsychosis as a endless cycle of re reincarnations. There, there were always some kinds of restrictions and, uh, and let's say, observations. For the school of uh, illuminationist philosophy, the restriction is it is possible for the souls, for the incomplete souls, to transmigrate to the bodies of the animals for the sake of purification. Uh, both Shah Razuri uh, divides uh, the, the, those who uh, discuss the theory of metempsychosis into three groups. Those who denied it and believe that uh, after death, the soul is disembodied, uh, and that, that's, that's the end. Those who are called as the reincarnationists, those who believe in the endless cycle of metempsychosis, and there are a, a third group who believe that it is possible for human beings, uh, who, for human souls, to be transmigrated into the body of animals for the sake of purification. And Shahrazuri called this third group the most erudite group among all people, which means an, an endorsement of the theory. Uh, I think uh, I have to wrap up, but uh, let me just read a few lines of one passage from Shah Azuri's commentary on Surah he re he, he, he It reads, the purpose of this section uh, on the clarification of metempsychosis is to clarify the states of rational souls after their separation from the bodies. The state of the happy souls to which belong the perfect souls and the souls that are intermediate in perfection as well as the transmigration of the unhappy souls from human bodies to animal bodies. So this is the only way that he endorses uh, the theory of metempsychosis, which is of, of great importance for him. It is possible for the sake of purification to uh, uh, believe in the veracity of theory of metempsychosis. 
after uh, Shah Rezuri, we also have some other figures uh, like Otbuddin Shirazi, who also believe in pre-eternity of the soul. And after that, we have the major Shiite figure uh, in the school of illumination and philosophy in the 16th century, uh, named Ibn Abi Jambur al-Ahsai, uh, who uh, came from Ahsa in today's in, in the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, al Asai uh, came from a Shiite background, and he uh, he also endorsed wholeheartedly the idea of uh, metempsychosis. The difference between Asai and Shahrazuri is. Shahrazuri uh, did not approve the uh, literal understanding of the corporeal resurrection of the soul, but what uh, um, Asai does is to make a combination between believing in metempsychosis on the one hand and at the same time approving and uh, and making arguments in favor of bodily or corporeal resurrection as well. Uh, and last but not least, we can find metempsychosis among uh, groups like uh, Anatolian, Anatolian Abdals and Babas in the 13th and 14th century. They, they, most of what we have is a, a kind of limited oral traditions from them. For example, we have the uh, character called Barak Baba, who was one of the leaders of the popular religion in the 13th century Anatolia, which has a, a kind of remnants of the cryptic shamanic uh, ideas at the first century of Islamization of Anatolia. So we have these kinds of figures. And as I mentioned very briefly, we also have groups like the Druze or the Alevites in Anatolia, or uh, we also have the people of truth uh, in today's Iran and Iraq who believed in a variant or version of the idea of metempsychosis. Long story short, to conclude, we can see the theory of metempsychosis among different groups of uh, Muslims uh, in, in, uh, as a form of minorities, or uh, yeah, as a form of minorities in which a limited version of metempsychosis or reincarnation is endorsed. Sometimes reincarnation solely is endorsed within one species, sometimes from human being to, uh, uh, to animals, and sometimes from minerals and plants uh, ascending towards human beings, depending on different positions. But what we cannot find is the uh, unconditional, let's say unconditional, uh, endless cycle of reincarnation. There is always some limits. I think we can discuss further in the in questions and ask, but yeah, I'll finish here. Thank you so much for your attention. Great.